identity, values, beliefs, behavior, result. What is at the most core foundational part of that? Not results, not behaviors. It's our identity. On a subconscious level, who do we believe ourselves to be? You are listening to the KML Movement Podcast. Connect with me on Instagram at Kelsey Lensman. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and don't forget to share with a friend. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the KML Movement Podcast. My name is Kelsey Lensman, and today we're going to throw a curveball at you. I'm going to throw a curveball at you and hit you deep here. Today we are talking, and when I say we, myself and Captain, my dog that's sitting right beside me, we are talking about identity. We are talking about your old story and potentially what is your new story to elicit that true change, to elicit what is actually within, all right? And so first, as we dig into this, I'm going to ask you a question. Who have you been? Who is that person that you've been? What is her story? What are the stories that you've been telling yourself? For me, I was that person that was really shy, that lacked confidence. That was more, I was nervous, right? I was intimidated by a lot of things. Who have you been, right? Who have you been? And second part, who is that woman that you want to become? Who have you been? But also, who do you want to become? Who is that person, right? And as we dig into identity here, and I want you to take a moment to pause this podcast. If you're in a car, don't pause it because you can't write. But I want you to pause this podcast and write that down. Who have you been and who is that woman you want to become? What does she do? What does she not do? Who does she surround herself with? What are her habits? Getting clear on who that person is you want to become, whoo, that's going to be powerful. And I'll, t- and I'll share with you why later. Okay. And so as we dig into this, guys, we're going to talk about identity. And many teams, many coaches focus on results and behaviors, right? What are the results? What are the goals that you want to have? Or what are the behavior changes, right? What are the habits we want to put in? And yes, we focus on those as a team here. We love to help our clients really narrow down their habits and get different results, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And so, yes, we focus on those. However... You know me, I love digging deeper. I am not just a surface level individual, so we love to dig deeper here with our team, okay? And so as we dig into identity, identity is what you believe about yourself to be true. What you believe about yourself and who you are on a deep level. It's who you believe you are on an unconscious or subconscious level, right? And so as we take it through this progression, the first part is identity. That is the foundation, okay? Your identity then forms your values, right? Or your identity and beliefs then form your values. And then your values form your beliefs and behavior. And behavior then forms your results. So it goes identity to values, values to beliefs, Beliefs to behavior, behavior to result. I know this is long. Stay with me here. Identity, values, beliefs, behavior, result. So what is at the most core foundational part of that? Not results, not behaviors. It's our identity. On a subconscious level, who do we believe ourselves to be? And there's many identities that can serve you. However, there's also many identities that don't serve you depending on where you are and what you are aware of, right? Many of us have stories or identities that are holding us back without us even realizing on a subconscious level. So you might say, Kels, why does this matter? 
Why are you talking to me about identity? Why are you talking to me about all of these things? I just want to get to a goal, okay? And this is why. As you take on your identity, your brain tries to keep you in alignment with who you believe yourself to be. I'm going to say that again. Regardless of what identity you have, your brain tries to keep you in alignment with who you believe yourself to be, regardless if it is beneficial or not. It tries to keep you in alignment with that. It will try to find or create proof that stays in alignment with that identity. I'll give examples to really bring it out, right? Then it forms values, beliefs, behaviors, and that result. Right? So at the core level, it tries to keep you in that alignment with that identity. Then it will form values, then beliefs, then behaviors, then results. Right? Many teams, many coaches focus on behaviors and results. That's why here we love to dig deeper. I ask challenging questions because that's not the root. So for example, okay, if you have an identity, whether you're aware of it or not, if you have an identity of being a very hard worker, you identify as being a hard worker. You are going to do everything in your power to stay in alignment with that identity. So when it comes a time where you can completely slack off or you can put in work that part of your brain, that subconscious level, you're not even consciously choosing this. That part of your brain is like, no, Kels, you're a hard worker. So you work hard, right? Take it on the flip side, right? You believe yourself as somebody who struggles with nutrition. Maybe you struggled with nutrition for your whole life. Well, I just struggle with nutrition, right? I don't know if I can ever figure it out. Or man, I've just, I've struggled my whole life. When you take on this identity of somebody that struggles with nutrition, what happens? You try, your brain tries to keep you in alignment with that identity. So what will happen? It will self-sabotage you. It will try to create proof through the hundreds of diets that you've tried. It will try to create proof or create proof that stays in alignment with this. This is so big. Please listen in. If you are somebody that you identify as just always struggling with nutrition, you're never figured it out. You don't know if you'll ever figure it out. Your brain is going to try on a subconscious, unconscious level to keep you there. It is going to try to keep you in alignment to be somebody that can never get nutrition. So it will self-sabotage you down for you to have the proof of, see, I failed another diet. See, I can't get this. See, that's exactly why I said that I wouldn't be able to understand it. It's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy of if I have this belief or this identity, I try to stay, my brain tries to keep me in alignment with it. And so as it tries to keep me in alignment, it will create self-sabotage. It will create opportunities for me to stay in alignment with that, regardless of whether it serves me or doesn't serve me. Okay? Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a daughter, maybe you're an accountant. What is your identity? I'm an accountant. I am well with numbers. I do well with numbers. Okay? It's going to make you have certain choices to keep you in alignment with that identity. This is why identities are so powerful. And your actions are then instigated by a result of you staying in alignment with your identity. I know this is a lot to take in. Lean in here. Your actions are then instigated by a result of you staying in alignment with your identity. Once again, I identify as somebody who always struggles with nutrition. Your actions are then instigated by a result of you staying in alignment with that identity. I am somebody that struggles with nutrition. Well, this is too hard. Well, I failed it again. Well, I'm somebody that can never get nutrition. See how that's an identity thing? Right? This was a big for one of our clients here. This is so awesome. 
she did our empower me which she was amazed i mean she went overcame a lot of back injuries way back in the day and she was somebody that never thought she could ever deadlift and i taught her how to do it and our team taught her how to do it correctly taught her the mind muscle connection i'm a big nerd when it comes to sports medicine stuff and so she joined our empower me okay and I sent a message to our team, our KML movement team, our clients here. And I said, hey, athletes, so pumped to see you tomorrow for the meet. This is like what you might need, X's and O's, right? I said, hey, athletes. And she pointed that out and she said, Kels, I have never been called an athlete before in my life. I grew up not being an athlete. I grew up not thinking I was an athlete. And when you said athlete, that completely changed the game for me because now I've never viewed myself as an athlete identity, right? And now I feel like an athlete identity. And so how do you think this person is going to then show up? She now views herself as an athlete because she is, because you are. Because she now views herself as an athlete, Guess what she's going to do to try to stay in alignment with that identity? She's going to prioritize her nutrition because that's what athletes do, quote unquote. She's going to show up in the gym. She's going to put the effort and work forward because now that's who she believes herself to be. Yes, she might have doubt at times, but that in of itself was transformative for her, right? That in of itself got her from not thinking one thing, identifying as not an athlete, to now identifying as, ooh, this is potentially who I am. This is, I've never been called that before. And just that one word, by me saying that one thing, I didn't even realize it was a big deal. That switched the game for her. That was huge, right? And so what are you identifying with? Who do you believe yourself to be? I had another client that trained at, in the morning at 5.30 in the morning, four or five days a week, okay? And I remember her messaging me and saying, Kels, I never thought that I would be a morning gym person. Identity. I never thought that I would be that type of person. Identity. You see how many like identity things I'm hearing right now, right? But I now am a morning gym person. I now am somebody that trains in the morning. Not that it's better. But she now had this identity that this is who she is. She now is a gym person. Now she now is a morning gym person. So what is her brain going to try to do? Keep her in alignment with that identity. It's going to be a little bit easier for her to get out of bed now because that's who she believes herself to be. That has been so big for me. Not that you have to work out in the morning or that is better. But I, I believe myself as somebody that I enjoy it. Like that's never thought that I would say this, but I enjoy waking up and going to train. Right? It sets my day right. Because I have this identity of somebody that trains, first that's an identity in of itself, guess what then happens? I have choices and I make decisions that stay in alignment with that identity. Not always, right? That weak voice may get to me at times. And so this is the breakthrough. This is where you go from spinning your wheels, trying all these diets, trying all these coaches, to actually getting results. Because you can upgrade your identity. Who you've been is not always who you have to be. Some of you really need to hear this right now. Who you have been is not always someone who you have to be, okay? What is that old story of yours? And what is your new story, okay? Those stories that you tell yourself will ultimately be the ones to hold you back because your subconscious, that part in your brain that accounts for 80 to 90%, tries to keep you in alignment with that, okay? You can upgrade your identity. You can think different thoughts, have different stories. But first we have to identify what that old story is and what I want my new story to be. We do a lot of identity work here, a lot of story work. Because this is actually going to bleed to them getting physical results. This is going to bleed to them being able to achieve a goal that they might not realize that they can. Okay? 
because we shifted their story. We shifted their identity. And now as I shift that identity, that old identity, as much as it did serve me, maybe at a time, there's parts of you, there's different seasons of you that they were not bad, inherently bad, or not even honestly that you maybe not wish that you didn't go through because guess what? All those versions of you led you to right here, right now. Every single version of you led to you listening to this podcast. And if you did not have one version, you might not be right here, right now. And so it's not that those old versions are bad or that those old versions just need to go away. But we get to identify, hey, what is my old story? And now I get to put myself in the driver's seat again and say, hey, what is my new story? What is my new story? Okay. Quick story, then I'll wrap it up. Growing up, especially high school, I was actually, I talked with a lot of people, but I was very shy. I did not like going up into a group of people and talking. I did not like saying uh, hi to somebody out of my way. Like I, I could honestly be super reserved, very introverted and be happy and be fine. All right. And when I moved to where I'm at now, I made a deal with myself is when I was at the gym I did not want to say hi to anybody, not because I didn't want to say hi to them, but because it made me uncomfortable to put myself out there to say hi to them. Okay. It made me uncomfortable to go up to somebody to say hi to them. I was uncomfortable about that. Okay. But I made a deal with myself. I said, Kels, Yes, you might identify as that introvert identity. You might identify as somebody that doesn't like to do that, right? But I'm going to make a deal with myself. Every single person that comes in that gym, I am going to go say hi to. One, it'll be nice. Like people love getting somebody to say hi to them. But number two, I'm training myself that who I've been is not always who I have to be, right? And so, yes, it was uncomfortable for the first few days, first few times, right? But after a while, guess what? That wasn't my story anymore. My story anymore isn't that I'm afraid to go say hi to somebody. Because I was willing to acknowledge my story that I was telling myself and challenge myself in a new story, a new identity, I was able to break through, break out of the stuff that was holding me back. Right? And so as we bring this home stretch, I want you to think about this sometime. And we're going to have a growth time right here. Okay? What is your old story? What is your old story? You can pause this and even write this down. And I would highly recommend writing this down. Writing it down versus just thinking it. Way more powerful. What is your old story? What is your new story? And who is that woman that you want to become? Who is that woman that you need to become to achieve those goals? What does she do? What does she not do? Who do you need to become to achieve the goals? When we shift it and identify that versus just identify some behavior change or identify just the results that you want to get, we do that all here. When we shift that and say, hey, who is that woman that you want to become? And who is that woman that you need to become to achieve what you want to achieve? That's when it gets good. And so guys, as we bring it back full circle, I know this was a content heavy one. This is some might be your first time you're really ever hearing it to this extent. But we got to get deeper. Dig deeper than just this behavior change result and then we keep running the same cycle because we don't actually fix the root of the problem, right? Your identity is one of the most powerful forces, is the most powerful force, in my opinion, besides God, big faith girl. Your identity identity is one of the most powerful sources in your life. And so as we identify that, then it allows us to understand why we might have been running the same patterns previously. Why have I always brought myself back down when I ultimately didn't want to, right? And as we shift that and acknowledge the identity, acknowledge that my brain tries to keep me in alignment with my identity 
or my story that I'm telling myself, it allows me to realize I get to change my story. I get to change my pattern. I get to change the pattern that I'm running over and over again that may not be serving me. All right. And so thank you for digging into this one. Re-listen to this one if you need. Most likely you will because this is very content deep heavy. But I would love if you took a screenshot of this. And if this impacted you in any way, you have no idea how much this makes my day when I hear it. But if this, there was a nugget in here, screenshot, tag me at Kelsey Lensman on Instagram. Tag at KML Movement, our team, right? And let me know what's one nugget you got. And I cannot wait for you to see you grow into the identity that you know that you can become. And that in of itself is going to be paradigm shift.